Okay, folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier, uh, instant movie review, fall. I just got out of the theater less than 10 minutes ago. Uh, pretty decent crowd for a Tuesday night. Uh, it's 7 o'clock screening here in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, for those of you that know me personally, you know that I've just uh, road tripped up to New England and back. Uh, this is my first official full day back here in Jacksonville and uh, the weather has cooled off a bit and good to see a movie and uh, when I went to the theater at seven o'clock it was still sunny out and now it's dark so there you have it that's how the uh, these things work so first off should you see this film I will say yes I say it's a thumbs up I say it's an enjoyable thrill ride of a movie you're not going to mistake this movie for Citizen Kane or War and Peace or War of the Roses or uh, anything like that. Jawbreaker from 1999 with Rose McGowan. This is its own thing. If any movie, you might consider this like uh, Cliffhanger, the old Sylvester Stallone uh, action film from 1993, I believe. Uh, just because of the action and the the stunts and so forth but this is a more grounded realistic story uh you know and now i guess basically i'll say if you want to see a movie with some suspense some action some danger uh i wouldn't call it violence per se but they're they're uh, some some animal inflicted violence like basically turkey vultures i believe they're called uh have some moments with bloodshed and so forth but uh I mean, I don't know, if you have a real sensitive stomach, if you don't like uh, suspense or stuff like that, or danger, I mean, this is not a blood and guts movie, not by my standard, but by some people's standard, it would be, okay? So what can I tell you? So I, I think most people could enjoy this movie. Uh, here's some thoughts. First of all, just in general, I like seeing movies like this, but I'm not the type of person that I ever feel that my life is so incomplete unless I bungee jump or fucking, you know, like I'm not, I'm, I'm the type of guy that if the pool says no diving, I don't dive. If the speed limit is 65, I go 65. Call me a fucking asshole, but I don't feel like there's some uh, thrill in breaking the rules of safety. But apparently other people feel that they must do that. They must uh, spit in the devil's eye just to prove that they're still alive. Uh, to quote Eric Bogosian, and, uh, or Bogosian if you would. And for me, I've never, I can understand that mentality. But I think those are the type of people that just don't enjoy normal life. Like they, they, their normal life is unfulfilling or they, they don't have a nice regular mind. And they have to uh, push the envelope and push all the things and push, push, push and risk their lives. So bungee jumping is stupid. Um, climbing mountains is kind of dumb too, if you think about it. Uh, and just, there you go. So that's how I feel. Others might differ in their opinion. Uh, but I just think that if you're doing these, uh, there was a case about well, five or six or seven years ago. There's somebody coming. So now I have to go around the corner because some fuck is coming. Some person is walking towards me, so now I have to walk away. Don't worry, I'm going to finish my thought. I just hate it when people get near me. Well, I'm trying to do my goddamn Mike's Instant Movie Review, and some person feels the need to uh, walk in my direction. And it's, they're, like, following me. I just don't like that. I mean, I'm trying to do my goddamn thing in the world. And this person has to follow me. I don't approve of that. Okay? I don't like being followed. Oh my god, just people. People annoy the piss out of me. I'm trying to enjoy myself after this long road trip. They're still coming. safe all right so let me finish my fucking review uh i was right in the middle of a thought uh 
God damn it all. What was I thinking about? God, I don't want to lose that thought. Uh, I'm not the type of person that feels the need to take these risks, endanger myself. And in this movie, you're dealing with these type of people. Now, of course, it's the cinema, so you want to see this in a movie. But, I mean, you want characters, hold on, that are interesting. God fucking Christ's sake. You want... You want characters that are interesting and plots that are interesting. But I just know that there's many people in real life that are like this. They have to climb a fucking mountain. They have to fucking surf with sharks. All this stupid shit. Ah, I remember the famous case six, seven years ago. Uh, there was a New England radio sports talk show guy. One of these abrasive fucks up in New England who uh, got into a bit of heat, a little bit of trouble, because he was covering a story that was a worldwide story. This famous baseball player died in a plane crash, and it wasn't a commercial, you know, big old jet airliner. It was a private plane that the baseball guy, I think he had been retired at that point, but he was flying the plane himself, and it crashed, and then there was actually, I believe there was video footage of this horrible accident or horrible situation. And the guy, you know, the, the former baseball player, I believe he had a wife and a couple of kids. And uh, when the, the videos were released, it was apparent. It was very, um, it, signs led based on the video that the guy was doing stunts in the air. Like he was stunt planing i don't know what you call that but just like going up and down real fast for no reason other than the thrill of it and some pretty dangerous stunts and uh he passed away he smashed his plane and died so uh there was people didn't really think it was a, a purposeful thing he didn't commit suicide per se but he acted in a manner uh, this, according to this radio, sports radio guy out of Boston, he acted in a manner that increased his chances for an accident, which led to his early death, which left his wife a widow and his children without a father. And the uh, sports radio guy took some issue with that and said, hey, look, you know, we can all give our condolences and our grievances and all this stuff. But at some point, you know, this was a, a, a selfish foolish act of behavior if you're a father if you have children if you have a wife you don't need to be uh doing stunts in the plane i mean it's bad enough that you're flying a private plane which i don't know how risky it is or not but if you're doing stunts you're really just uh, disrespecting your own life is what the uh, sports radio guy his opinion was and the timing that he said all these things which I actually agree, I agree with his sentiment, although I do remember his delivery was a bit crass and like typical New Englander crass, uh, jokey, I guess. But to me, the basic sentiment I would agree with, you know, if you're a risk taker, if you're riding around on a motorcycle with no helmet on, then don't cry when you fucking fall off, okay? So there you have it. That being said, once I get into this movie, Fall, uh, spoilers, here they fucking come. The movie starts with, there's a beautiful blonde woman, her name is Hunter, uh, very, um, you know, titty and assy, blonde, very attractive, and uh, she's mountain climbing with her two friends, which I didn't realize at the time, but apparently they're married uh, what's the name, Brett Bex, and, and the fucking guy, and, uh, so they're all, they're a married couple, I thought they were just going out, I thought they were very young when the movie started, but apparently they're more like mid-twenties, I guess, and lo and behold, a bat or a bird or some such thing flies in the face of the poor guy, and he loses his hold on the mountain, and off he goes into death. And that happened to be the husband of the one chick. And then later on, it's revealed something with the other chick. Of course, that I could see coming a mile of fucking way. Uh, but that's okay. So then 
It's a year, 51 weeks later, we see that Bex, the widow, the, the crying bride, is now a fucking alcoholic. Uh, she's going to the bars to drink her sorrows. Uh, she's lucky that she doesn't end up like Jodie Foster in the, the Accused because she's tempting fate, going to these horrible dive bars, drinking herself into a stupor. Her loving father comes to get, take her home from the bar. She gives him a hard time. Uh, etc etc and then a couple of days later she's about to commit suicide with uh, alcohol and pills when suddenly her phone rings she hears my cherry pie goes to the cell phone and it's her little blonde friend and her little blonde friend hasn't been around for a while she was the same chick from the mountain when the husband guy died little blondie's back hunter's back and she's uh, demanding to see her friend she comes over, she spends the night, and basically it's like, hey, your dad called me, he told me you're really, uh, you know, doing poorly, but I'm going to do something that's going to cheer us up. We're going to fucking climb this tower, like this non-working light tower in the middle of the fucking desert somewhere, and it's only six hours from here, and fucking, what's her uh, lady, I was going to say what's her twat, but I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, she says, okay, uh, no, we really shouldn't, but then she agrees to do it. So they're going to climb this fucking tower in the middle of nowhere. Now, credit to the filmmakers, uh, they, they did make this tower climbing look very realistic, and the mountain climbing at the beginning was realistic. I do have, like, God, I'm tired. I like how films now have all this technology to make crazy shit look real. So they're climbing this goddamn tower... And of course, as the audience, we see that some of the bolts are coming out of the ladder in this tower and so on and so forth. So these girls are in trouble. They get to the height of the Eiffel Tower. And, and of course, the blonde chick is this social media uh, living for likes whore. She, she does YouTube and she tries to get all these likes. And that's how she funds her life is by being a YouTube you know, stunt hot chick. Uh, and the other one, the, the brunette, the sobbing widow, isn't like that. You know, she doesn't like all that shit. And she's a sobbing widow. So we get these broads up on the fucking tower. And uh, then the, you have all these foreshadowings with these turkey vultures and so forth. They climb, they climb, they climb. And guess what the fuck happens? Uh, the ladder falls off. The ladder just finally falls. And these two chicks are stuck at the top of this tower you know many miles in the air and they have no way of getting down they have their ropes they do have a uh one of those things gopro like the uh the things that go in the fucking air like the the things that you put your uh, the, the fucking whatever the fuck not gopro but the what do they call those goddamn things the annoying things they're like flying saucers for everybody you know what i'm talking about the remote controlled asshole gizmos that annoy me Oh, what's the word for that fucking thing? Uh, so they basically have one of those. They have two cell phones, but they don't have any cell phone ser of service service because they're in the middle of fucking nowhere on top of this tower. Uh, so they got to try to figure out how do we SOS for help. They do find a fire gun up there that there's some assholes in the distance that don't help and so on and so forth. And so basically, and then at some point, spoilers, it's revealed... That blondie fucked the other one's husband for four months and even uh, was in on the 143 thing. There's another person coming. So, uh, very interesting movie. Um, you know, not, I want to say oh, it's a good movie. Oh, good movie. waiting for this individual to leave a good movie um uh, interesting i wouldn't say interesting but suspenseful i like the movie interesting is really not the right word for it uh, you do for me at least folks i start to question the uh the white women white chicks they're just crazy you know like oh or, you know you kind of like have some resentment for white women regardless and then this movie starts and you just get more because 
Uh, one of them sobbing over her dead husband. And I guess uh, this relates in a roundabout way to some of my own life experiences. I knew a female once upon a time. Nice girl, attractive girl, kind of uh, on the middle earth side of things like not too edgy not too artsy but her big drama in life and i don't want to give too many personal details in case she's seen this not that she gives a fuck but she had a, a fiance that passed away uh you know at some point before i met her maybe a year maybe less and uh she was kind of traumatized by this and she was kind of always like the weeping widow at age 26 or 27, whatever she was. And it's just kind of like, okay, we can do this for a few months, but you know what I mean? At some point, sister, he's not coming back. So, I mean, unless you want to wilt yourself, uh, get back in the game of life, you know what I mean? Uh, sad story, I try to be diplomatic in telling it, but it kind of reminded me, you know, that female that I knew in real life reminded me of this character in the movie um, you know, you're, you're playing the, the, the crying widow, uh, you know what I mean? And it's like, get the fuck over it. So anyway, I, I sound so crass, but it's just how I feel. So, and then the big reveal that Blondie fucked the boyfriend or the husband guy, that was no shocker to me. Uh, why would you get a fucking tattoo with this code thing? Uh, Basically, the guy had this code for I love you, which was 143, and that's tattooed on the mistress' best friend character, uh, Hunter. So, I mean, kind of a dumb twat move if you're going to cheat uh, with your best friend's husband, then probably whenever he died or whatever, don't get the tattoo of their little love code thing. Stupid move, Hunter. But it's a movie, so you deal with it. So like I said, this is not going to be confused with Citizen Kane or whatnot. But as far as a movie to watch, it's a movie to watch. You know, you go into the theater, it's air conditioned. You get the nice reclining seats. The movie looks great on the big screen and you watch it. Uh, and then if you really want to do extracurricular work, uh, you watch my movies, Disregard the Vampire, a Mike Messier documentary, Blood Sugar Sid Ace, a feature fucking film you can watch for free. You go to Amazon, you buy my books, uh, Fight or Play Basketball, A Distance from Avalon, uh, my pro wrestling book on Vela, my fucking uh, Bad Girls with Good Tattoos, uh, a book that I published uh, for Kate Spain, a female writer. So you do all those goddamn things once in a while. <clears throat> my film book, you can purchase that. My advice for film fucks and everybody else. And that's it. So that's what you do with your life. You don't have to climb a goddamned mountain in order to prove something to a bunch of assholes. Okay? So that's it. Subscribe to Mike Messier YouTube channel. I give Fall a big thumbs in the ass up.